The next program, none of you have probably heard about, so I'm not even going to ask you the question. However, I designed it. So, I saved the best for last. I'm going to tell you this is a culmination of me sitting in your seat for a couple decades, working for a contractor as a project manager, an accountant, a marketing person when I was in college. Graduated, became a general contractor consultant, and obviously owned several businesses. Over that time, I realized that our small, closely held businesses, the CEOs, they have a lot of talent. The unfortunate thing is there's only one of them. And so what I was committed to do was find a way to clone the CEO. And so your biz in the cloud is a disruptive SaaS, at software as a service, technology that empowers individuals and organizations to run their operations in a mobile environment by accessing just-in-time business information to manage opportunities, maintain human records and resources, produce financial reports with automatic algorithms, oversee project budgets, and more while reducing the workforce and cost to run your business. Mission statement is to empower industries to access a simple, secure, and streamlined business and financial cloud-based data repository. A lot of words out there. What that really means is taking all of your office files mm -hmm. and putting them in the cloud. And when you go to the Your Business in the Cloud website, you'll see that they have many different data points, some which can be imported and exported as we talked about earlier, and some that you'll want to do the data entry yourself based on the nature of the information that you're you know, supplying. The system is designed to eliminate barriers with communications with the field and office, empower those small business executives, and give them the power to know the health of their firm in every department, mm -hmm. not just schedule or production. So today, in our agenda for the Your Business Cloud section, we're going to just do an introduction, discuss a little bit about the design intent, we're going to share a quick start user guide, and this program is so comprehensive, we're only going to show you about a third of the slides that are contained in that guide. And then we're going to do a short video, it's like three minute video. All right, so the foundation of the design of this robust tool is a combination of data points that I was collecting over the years from public disclosures and working with some of the largest contractors and engineering firms in the Northwest. We've been able to access requests for proposals, qualification statements. In my previous life, I was a controller, so accounting and being familiar with general accepted accounting principles and practices is something that was a part of my daily life. So understanding those financial reports the contract agreements themselves, certifications, business plans, and all kinds of documentation that businesses need to have, coupled with Fortune 500 vendor applications. So a lot of you may want to work with a large business, and in order to do that, you have to respond to an RFP or a vendor app. When I was 19, I was working for a contractor, and he did a lot of work for the government. And when he was doing work for the government, he had to respond to a lot of these forms, these government forms. Every job required him to fill out these forms. And I was like, man, the name of your business isn't changing. Your address isn't changing. Your name isn't changing. So I was looking for common threads so I could find, hey, we don't have to do this every time. Taking that, that common sense, logical approach, we don't have to fill out all these forms every day mm -hmm. or every time we have a project. We can replicate these forms. We can develop our own repository of information that doesn't have to be recited over and over and over again. So that's where this came from. 1991, y'all. That's how long 
this has been, you know, being developed. Now our vision statement for Your Biz in the Cloud is businesses can provide just-in-time access and communication of their financial, promotional, organizational data in a cost and resource efficient manner. Meaning I can open up my program and find out, you know, what my last excise tax was. I can find out all my employees. I can find out what kind of inventory, look at my financial statements, all that. One program. Does it do equipment? I think we call it inventory. And we've taken that inventory and taken it from what you procured that piece for, okay. what the current market value okay. uh, of that piece. We go through the whole process. And so all those data points are there for you. Okay. And they can be updated annually right. you know, as your assets change in value. And the great thing about it is once you enter your record, it keeps that information in there. So it's a, it's a record. So you have the history of that asset from day one to today. Every time you went in and made a change, okay. Okay. or if you so upgraded that right. inventory, you have added a, a widget to it that made it more valuable, sure. or it went through some conditioning that sure. made it, made you know, it. all that information is all captured there. The key for us was when we were creating the database, and I was blessed because I have a Microsoft architect who was working on all the, okay. the, the architecture. I'm not a data geek. I'm a geek with data. But anyway, so this is a Your Business Cloud Quick Start Guide, and it's a really easy program to get familiar with. Before you do anything in the program, you notice you see a little login button on the right. You really can't do anything until you get to that login. Once you log in, you go through that process of entering your information. You'll be granted permissions once you secure your subscription. Once you're logged in, now it says log out, meaning that you're already in the system now. Now you can navigate through the system. And you notice all the column headings. So you go over, you see the user guy, about me, my company, my customers, my finances, my projects, excuse me, my banking experience, my reports, okay? What I wanted to do was to show you the kind of information you're going to see. On this slide, you'll see that we have general information, officers, partnerships, employees, it goes into all the demographics of your employees, their hire date. Small businesses have to respond to opportunities on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And so the more content you can put in there, the more helpful it'll be when you spit out your proposal at right. the end. And so we've developed a system and every piece of information you think you would ever want is a separate data point. We developed the program before they hired B2G now. We had the only DBE application in our cloud-based program in Washington State. So you could actually fill out a DBE application using this program and you can submit that information, supplemental refer to whatever, and it'll save you some time. And we've developed the program with the mindset that it takes a lot to become certified. Yeah. And where are you getting all that information? If you don't have someone in the office working full time for you, then you may have a problem getting updated and certified on time. And so you need to be able to have tools that can store it all. And so it acts as a repository, but it's a little smarter than that. And I'm gonna show you in a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next screen goes to the about me. You can't really enter any information in until you enter the information about the user. User is typically the business owner, but not necessarily. Now you can start entering information on the company itself. You can enter information about the licenses, licenses by industry, and even meetings. That's another thing that we do as business owners is we don't document all our meetings. The calendar is a great way if you use it for every meeting. But if you don't use it for that phone call that you just had 20 minutes ago, there has to be a way to sync everything together. So we put all the meetings in there and then you can classify the meeting. Hey, was it a project meeting? Was it a corporate meeting? Was it a marketing meeting? Was it a shh meeting? Whatever the meeting is, you know, whether it's a board meeting, whatever that situation was, you can classify that. This system can be completely customizable. Does that act like a timesheet as well? We have a time piece 
to the program as well. Okay. Because you are going to have to do payroll. Mm -hmm. And though this is not an accounting program, it does have a general ledger. So it's even broken down where it can do that as well. The next screen is more information on the company. And so it gives you information on the history, if it's business closures, any claims, if you have a business plan. And the great thing about the business plan is most business plans are supposed to be updated. And so every time you make an, it, 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 it captures that information. What is the security on this information? Top security, we're using the same types of third-party organizations that Microsoft and Amazon are dealing with. Right. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Right. I'm not in a security business. Right. We want to keep our information secure and sound. The, also, the good thing about this program is it can be cloud-based or server-based. Okay. So if you don't want it in the cloud, you can... Can you back it up to... Uh... We use the Azure. And so it's constantly being backed up. If you have a bonding company, mm -hmm. if you need to reactivate a company, mm -hmm. and you'll notice in every one of these slides there's an upload. Because sometimes you have PDF documents or other documents, pictures and whatnot, videos. All that stuff can be uploaded. The next slide is on projects and in prospects. And so you can go through this process and identifying those key leads that we start at a prospect will hopefully end up in a customer. Right. Finances. Now, this data entry screen allows you to self-enter data. And this is a really slick thing. A lot of times when you go to the bank and you want to develop a different relationship with the bank, now they're not looking at you as a depository. Now they're looking at you as a potential lending client. You know, they look at you a little differently <laughs> when you kind of cross that. Yes. Yes. Well, one thing I've realized over the years is our small businesses don't necessarily know what they're looking at. Well, my degree's in business. Mm -hmm. And so when I started my business right. and I went and asked my bank, uh -huh. I need a, a line of credit, they looked at my financials and the banker, you know what the banker told me? He said, uh, you don't need a loan. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> and I said, you know damn well if I ask you for some money when I need it, you're not going to give it to me. <laughs> so you need to know Before you need it. when you go talk to the bank, right. you need to know what their underwriters are looking at. Right. Right. You need to know how they want that information presented, right? <laughs> we made it work. I got my line of credit, <laughs> but I had to move up to the vice president of the corporation right. to make it happen. Right. Some of our small businesses are the most persistent mosquitoes <laughs> you can find. And so persistence, right persistence, persistence, okay? But check out this page. We have 43 banking ratios in the system. Not all of them are displayed, but what we do is we're taking that information that was taken from the balance sheet, the profit and loss, your accounts receivable aging, your accounts payable aging, your cash flow, all these various numbers right. that correspond with these ratios. And now you can go into the bank and tell them how much you want and justify why they should give it to you. Right. This is my debt to right. worth ratio. Right. This is my current ratio. This is the acid test on my receivables. Right. Thank you very much. Or I need to take my banking elsewhere. The idea is you don't need an MBA, a PhD, no, 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 nothing to take away from you. Go on, get your degrees, girl. But you don't need a PhD to be able to negotiate with your lender, right. with your bonding underwriter. Now, as you can see, this is in the prospects, and these are some of the data points. And as you go into each one of the data points, you can really detail out that information that's important to you. And again, all this stuff is customizable. And the great thing is every cell, every data point you see can now be a search piece. Mm -hmm. So if I want to do a search on any one, any company, 
any transactions with that company name right. or any transactions with this business type or any transactions having to do with this employee. So this is where you can infer information about your bank. You can have as many banks as you, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. people have different banks. Right. Some people have money market CDs, IRAs, and all that stuff. The other link is uh, experience. Many of you are working with new clients or would like to work with new clients and they ask you, well, who have you worked with before? Well, if you don't have that insight readily available right. and you got to go through your file cabinet looking for it, it's not going to be really effective. Yeah. But what if you have a repository of all those references yeah. and you've documented your experience? You should have your portfolio built. And part of what we think about is it's one thing saying I've done a job. It's another thing to be able to identify what specifically we did mm -hmm. in that job. What were the barriers? Yeah. What were the achievements? Mm -hmm. What makes you extremely valuable? Right. If someone else was in that position, the building would have fell down. <laughs> but since I was here, we got it done ahead of schedule. And so we're thinking about how to make our user stars. How can it be best be presented to be able to be received well from the prospective client? And the final is reports. And so there's a number of reports, vendor reports, and other things that are customizable for the program, depending on your use. We have different users, some in manufacturing, some in services, some in construction, some in technology, energy, you name it. And so it's designed to be for a business, a general business. Okay. However, the guts came from the second most complicated industry on the planet, construction lightly influenced by the first most riskiest business on the planet, the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. And so as we were developing the skeleton, right. we tried to make a skeleton that had every part in a business or a human body for a, a comparison. Okay, this is the last video I'm playing. It's a two minute video. We're gonna turn the lights off and I'm not gonna move because it's gonna go quick. This was a promotional video, so what you're going to hear is how they were promoting and reaching out to investors. So it's a different feel than you're going to have from some of the other videos. YBIC, good morning. Yes, he told me you might call. Uh, let's see, he's pulling together a workshop, then a client meeting, uh, reviewing a new proposal, and then he's got a presentation to the board. Yes, we already have a team member pulling that information, researching license numbers, meeting minutes, data on the lawsuit, our bonding and insurance records, and pulling financials. And there isn't any single place online to organize it all. Your Biz in the Cloud is a super secure virtual filing cabinet and administrative assistant for small business people. For startups and micro businesses, your Biz in the Cloud consolidates in one place all information needed to. Develop SBA approved business plans and financial statements. Use streamlined vendor applications and state certification forms. For established and growing small businesses, your Biz in the Cloud offers advanced tools too. Manage personnel and identify training opportunities. Track legislation and rule changes affecting your business and industry. Do comparative analysis to see how your business stacks up to competitors. Track major projects and manage business assets. When your profile is complete, you'll have an operation system that rivals that of a major corporation at a fraction of the cost. With your support, our next move is to retain a programmer to finish algorithms that generate competitiveness scores to help small businesses improve efficiency and target opportunities. We also are hiring a customer service agent to coordinate college interns who will help micro business owners with data entry and technical support. We expect to deploy one intern for every 20 users. The system will save an average business owner 15 reams of paper, that's one tree, and at least two weeks of administrative time every year. Do more business and less paper in the cloud with your biz in the cloud. The price for this product is 120 per month or $1,200 per year. As you can see, there's a 
substantial savings for a year annual purchase. And the Entrepreneurial Institute of Washington gets a pretty substantial discount, as you can see. We would highly encourage a small business to use QuickBooks. It's just a no-brainer. But if they don't have it yet, we don't want them to wait to the year end with a shoebox. This is a step up from that and can be articulated to your accountant. You can define your cost codes and you know your ledger accounts and be able to do your taxes from that, if worst case scenario. Okay, so we have covered four different programs. They all are, you know, different. Obviously all could be leaders in their various area. Some are more well known than others, but can you see how some of these programs or all of these programs can help improve your productivity and possibly your profitability within your companies? Right. Can you give me some specific areas and how you think these tools can be beneficial for your company? More accuracy, efficiency, just better record keeping, data keeping, um, control of documents. That's a commercial right there. Are these all supposed to work together as well? Well, they can work independently or they can complement each other. And so that's why I brought them in because they all have different strengths. So I see this as a tool for administrative um, responsibilities mm -hmm. to best manage the systems in the back office. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you still need the person to do this. It would help them to manage the uh, all of the uh, paperwork and information in a way that would make things um, really flow smoothly and tracking. The key with the YBC program mm -hmm. is most of the data that you're entering is data that you're entering somewhere else. Right, right, right. And so you're having to make, again, that change of habit. And as it relates to the time and staff, we encourage folks to build a module at a time. Build that business module up. Mm -hmm. And now when someone asks you for information, you have a very robust business module that can be printed out and referred to in future RFPs. And so now that's a right off the bat, you can start getting some immediate benefit. What does it look like? Do you have a sample? I'll open up the website once we finish up and okay. give you some exposure to it. And if you'd like to get some more information, reach out to me offline and we can, we okay. can talk about it. We also have, as you heard in the video, we're working with college interns to be able to augment some of the data entry. We're always trying to create opportunities for our young people. To me, if we don't leverage their talent now, they're gonna go work for someone else. Right. And so, I was 19 when I was exposed to the industry, yeah. and it was tremendously valuable for me. So I, I'm always looking for more protégés, interns to take place and, and to participate on that. But the goal is not to create a time sink the goal is to empower you. And, you know, it typically takes anywhere from 10 to 15 hours to fill one of those vendor questionnaires out. Mm -hmm. But you got to fill it out how many times? That time, you do it once in our system, and now you're empowered. The next time you do it, you can refer to this. You know, if you see some information that is not in our system that's in their application, we'll customize that and make sure that that's added in there. I'd be surprised if there's some data points that aren't in there, but there may be. Any other questions? All right, so as far as next steps, we want you to share information with your colleagues. We want you to obviously consider acquiring subscriptions for these systems. Get registered for the next WASDOT class, and if you're not taking advantage of the DBE support services, make sure that you do so. Watch previously recorded classes. If you look at my business card, you go to our website, you'll see that we've created a contractor university page. And there is multiple videos free for you to gain access to this material. Yeah, that's been a really good resource, the, the videos are. And I'm glad those are helpful for you. And be sure to advise your clients that you took this class because some of these technologies 
are technologies that they may be actively using and knowing that you guys are actively mm -hmm. using them may give you an, an upper hand. Are there any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have you all here today.